Today we're going to use the High Jump Omnitech Sales Solution to talk about how we do field service. So field service is something, a subset of a lot of mobile sales solutions uh, where people are using service techs or maybe they're going out and servicing equipment as well as selling product. So we've got one subset here. We're going to be looking at our tablet solution and you can see we're at our home screen here where we can see our on the left hand side showing our website of our maple syrup world. On the right hand side shows us our structure where we're actually going through and looking at the accounts that we could service do the different things that we need to do. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to tap on service account. And the first thing I see is I'm, I'm by default, I'm showing up all my accounts. So, you know, I don't necessarily want to look at all my accounts today. I'm going to look at my specific accounts for today being Thursday. So when I tap on that. Now I see I've got five specific accounts that I want to go and look at. And let's go ahead and say, well, let's have a look at Pita Pit to start off with. So some information comes up, it defaults into the notes screen telling us some information about where the Pita Pit is and who to check in with and all the fun stuff like that. We also have account specific notes. So this, this top section is the notes that are tribal knowledge that the mobile user or the field service tech uses. The bottom half of the screen are account notes. These are things that are get pushed down from the office like they might have displays or they have specific service areas to clean up or maybe upselling on different products. These can be expanded or collapsed as you need. And as we go into this particular account, the Pita Pit that we're gonna to go to service, we can see additional information. So let's let's click on Pita Pit here. And we come up and we've got going directly into this and we're gonna look at the, the service history and what we're gonna do here. We could actually look at transactional level history. We can see the messages on what the different types of things they can do. Or we can go directly into the actual service itself. So let's do that. Let's click on service. And I've got a couple of different items on here that I can show, uh, but I want to show all my items that I'm doing. And this, this is a very simple service scenario where I have service times, I have different types of service, as well as maybe a setup fee or a configuration fee. And in field service, you may or you may not want to have your mobile users seeing what the price of these things are. So to avoid any confusion, because perhaps they might not be collecting money for these sort of things out in the field, they might not actually want to show the pricing. So this particular setup, in my case here, I'm not showing what the pricing is. So I'm just setting up everything as a, as a default of zero price. So I can see across the top, I've got sales and I've got returns. My color changes when I'm on the different co categories, whether I'm selling things or returning things. So I can start off with, if I'm going out to do a service tech, I might be in the in need to do, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna first off do a specific service. So let's go through and click on service one. We're gonna add that and we're gonna say we did it. So I've added one specific service that's in there. I could add additional notes on the line. I could do track record information on that. I can also record my time. So in this case, I'm gonna add service time, but instead of just putting in the one, I can actually go in here and say, I've got you know, what in a product sale might be cases and units in a time entry is hours and minutes. So I might be doing, uh, maybe I just did an hour and, uh, oh, I don't know, let's say 20 minutes. And I can go through that and that's converting it. So I did an hour and 20 notes that converted that to 80 minutes there. So it's converting it to that lowest common denominator for me. If I were putting in an installation of a new unit, maybe it's a cooler, maybe it's a, uh, a new television, maybe it's a new refrigerator, I don't know, whatever that might be in here. Again, we're using generic items on here, so I'm gonna go through and click on a setup fee. And notice in the bottom right-hand corner, my dollars didn't change, because again, remember, we're not actually showing the pricing for this. If I did have to do a setup fee, I could go here. I can also go in here and put in a comment, and maybe I need to go and say uh, installed, uh, let's say a, a, a 10, 10 foot, uh, freezer and let's go ahead and close that one and I've now put a comment on there you can see the little page show up over on the right hand side so it's telling me what that setup fee is for so in your more specific scenario I'm sure you'd have a setup fee for a specific widget or part or thing and you would probably have those part numbers showing over here on the left hand side of the screen so you could see those different pieces uh, I might also show on here and I'd have information on like the different images or what the actual goods look like, or maybe I'm going through and seeing inf item information, seeing what that setup is, or what the historical information is for that. If I put pricing on here, and again, I'm not putting pricing on this, you would see the dollar value associated with it as well. 
So we're just doing a simple service here. We're going to go ahead and complete this. I didn't have any returns to complete because I didn't collect anything. I'm just setting up an item, just doing a service on it, installing it, away I go. So I'm gonna finalize my ticket. In this case, I go in here and I got, I've got some pricing information. If I had pricing information, I'll be showing that. If I have the ability to change it, you notice there's the little red arrow on here. So all I can do is change and go price up. I can't go price down. Gives me a price range, a little bit crazy on here from zero to just short of a million dollars if I really wanted to charge that on here. So I've got information relevant to that service, relevant to the service time and that setup fee. When I hit continue, it's gonna give me an option to view that invoice before I go and deliver it or that ticket. If I'm gonna go ahead and post the ticket, if it's a retail, I might be asked to do a DEX on this one. I'm not. So I go in directly to my screen and I do my little scribbly signature and I say, yes, I am a field service tech one. It's not a very creative name, but again, kind of a generic scenario. So I hit okay. When I hit continue on this, I'm now completing this. And from my maple syrup world, I see I've added these different items. There's time, there's information on there my squiggly signature at the bottom, if I needed to email that, if I needed to print it, or if I'm just gonna go ahead and continue, I do that. I've now completed the service. Maybe there's something I wanna do. Maybe there's a different task that's there. I might need to go and collect some information. So if I go into that survey, again, if these were required, it would prompt me to do that. The yellow button on here is indicating these are optional. So let's do one that's optional. So I might have a merchandising task that I'm gonna go through after completing the service. Maybe I have to merchandise the unit as well. So let's click on this. And it asks me, did I review the promo plan? Yes or no? Well, I didn't, so I'm gonna say no. And why was it not accepted? Well, if they didn't wanna look at it, man, maybe the manager wasn't in, so I'll click on that guy. And then did I install shelf tag hoppers? Well, I put in a refrigerator or freezer, I think I said. So maybe I was supposed to put something on top of that. So let's say no, we didn't do that one. And then did I review and remove any code dated products? So in the merchandiser scenario, you're probably touching product. In the field service, you may or may not be. So let's say no on this one. And then I'm gonna ask, did I confirm the planogram and the facings? Again, this one, let's say yes. And were there any issues? Well, let's say yes again. And when I do the yes on this one, now I'm, I'm digging deeper into this. So it's describe the issues. Well, the freezer cord did not reach. Had to install extension. So I could put that on there and that's tracking additional information on what I did for this service. And as I go ahead and complete this, I can now hit finish stop. And when I do, I've gone and completed that service at Pita Pit. I can now go ahead and drive to the next place I needed to do. To do that, I can go back out here, click on Sports Rock. Maybe I tap on this and I look at that information I'm gonna go through. Maybe I go into the Sports Rock itself, continue along. I might go to look at the map to see where I'm gonna go for that location, to see what I need to do. It gives me a little pin of where I'm gonna go. If I need to do more than that, I can click on the little turn button, the directions, and I get turn by turn. On my tablet, I've got Google Maps. If you're using an iPhone, it would be Apple Maps. If you're using an Android phone, it would be Google Maps. Uh, it's really just the default map solution in that application, so you could use Waze or whatever solution you want as well. So I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna be happy with this. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go ahead and complete that service. And now you've seen how I've done a field service for an account where I'm going in, doing a setup fee, adding some time, maybe adding parts, configuration or setup fee on top of that with or without dollar values so that they can see it, collect the signature from that, that customer and moving on to the next stop. So with that, a uh, quick tour through Hydro Omnitech sales and how we do field service. Thank you.